All right, boys, we're off to the Longs house up the Moigley Road today. Rumour has it they know more than they're letting on about the ambush last week. We'll turn the place inside out and upside down if we have to. Got that? Stiff? What? Are you listening? Yeah, Sarge, yeah. Inside out, upside down. They have a playwright staying with them. He's a sympathiser. I want him arrested on sight. You got that, Stiff? Yes, yeah, yes, uh, I have. Are you sure? Inside out, upside down. Yes, uh, yes, I have it. Right. Let's go, boys. Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. I thought you were going to make a start in the tables. I was just about to. Then there's the crates to be brought up. I'll do it. I know you're worried about Sean, Mary. We all are. But no news is good news, eh? Yeah. Daddy, when will all this fighting end? I don't know, Thor. But if we want to keep a roof over our heads, we have to just get on with it. Oh, hello, sissy. It's early for you. Are you taking to the drink now? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Barry. I just want to have a quick chat with Mary. Don't keep her too long. Though she could do with some cheering up. What's wrong? Everything. Sean. Everything. Sean will be fine. Just think of your fancy man and you'll cheer right up. <laughs> oh, God, Mary. I, I'm sorry. Tell me. I can't. Did you finish with him? Look, I don't want to talk about it. I... I can't. What did you want? Can we go upstairs? I'm supposed to be working. Please. Joseph is way over there. He won't hear a thing. What is it? I want you to swear on your life that you won't breathe a word. What ails you? Swear. I swear. Not a word to anyone. My lips are sealed. I'm in a terrible... Shh. Come on in, Seamus. The best pub in Maynooth. Very nice indeed, Mr. O'Sullivan. You are to call me Con. Uh, indeed. Con. Hello, ladies. Seamus, here we have two for the price of one. We came in specially to see you, Mary, but Sissy here is an added bonus. Girls, I'd like you to meet Mr. Seamus McCullough, the well-known playwright. I've never heard of him. You girls are hardly mixing in the same circles. Anyhow, Seamus, this is Mary Barry, whose stepfather owns the pub, and this is Sissy Boland. Charmed, I'm sure. It's a pleasure, ladies. Miss Barry. Mr. McCullough. Miss Boland. Pleased to meet you, Mr. McCullough. Oh, let's dispense with the formalities. You can address me as Seamus. That's most kind of you. I declare, Con, that in the few days I spent in Maynooth, I am constantly amazed at the natural beauty of the female population. Oh, why, some say we have the best in Ireland. And the present company far exceeds any expectations I might have had. <laughs> I have travelled the length and breadth of the country. I speak from experience. Uh, truly, there must be something in the air out here. The only thing in the air at the moment is the smell off that river. It's rotten. Well, I did notice an unusual odour along the main street, but one would become oblivious to such things in the presence of great beauty. What can I do for you, Mr O'Sullivan? Oh, yes. As you know, I'm a member of the Gaelic League. I don't think we're allowed to forget, are we? Mary, I might leave and come back in a minute. A minute of your time, Cece. We won't keep you long. The League is thinking of setting up a drama class with a view to staging some plays of Irish interest. And we're looking to recruit members. We'd a lot of interest already. You're looking for us to join? I remember seeing you recite some poetry a few years back. I thought you were very good. I don't think Mary's poems would suit the Gaelic League. I have better things to be doing than reciting poems. Oh, right so. Sissy, you are also on my list, and you might be able to recruit some of the students from the college. I don't know. I, 
I only called in to talk to Mary, and she... I'm sure you can use your charms. Joseph, come here. Yes, is there a problem? Meet Seamus McCullough, the playwright. This is Joseph Barry, owner of the pub and a great supporter of the Gaelic League. Pleased to meet you, Mr Barry. McCullough, didn't you do a concert in Dublin last year to support the strike and railway workers? It was actually a play that I wrote. I am delighted to hear that my reputation has preceded me as far as Maynooth. Well, my stepson Sean worked on the railways. It was appreciated. Seamus here is going to help the league set up a drama class and we're recruiting members. Cavorting around on stage. I've heard stories about these actors and the women. It's said they're just a step up from, well, you know. I can assure you this is merely to further the Irish tradition of storytelling. We'll be performing wholesome Irish plays which celebrate our rich culture and highlight events from our history. If it's for the League, I suppose it's all right. As long as it doesn't put notions in their heads. You had a play performed in Dublin. Indeed I did, called Self-Reliance. I directed it also. It was based on the struggle during the Great Strike in 1913. The Evening Telegraph described the prison scene as striking. Which is apt, as it's about strikers, eh? <laughs> and it's going to be done in the Abbey Theatre. Uh, Con is slightly previous in his remarks. Uh, I have submitted it to the Abbey uh, for consideration. Mr Yates himself was quite impressed with the script. He did suggest that it needed some rewriting, uh, which I'm currently doing. Who's Yeats? Well, William Butler Yeats is, is the world-renowned Irish poet and founder of the Abbey Theatre in Dublin. <laughs> I would propose that the Gaelic League here would make their debut performance with one of the short plays. And Seamus here will direct it. My services are at your disposal. And what brings you to Minute? I have a friend, uh, Patrick Long, who lives in Moy Glare. I'm on what you might call uh, an extended holiday. Since the performance of my play, the authorities have been more than a, a little interested in my movements, so I felt it best to remove myself from Dublin. You mean you're on the run? Not at all. He was just advised to lay low for a while. Uh, we've had some trouble here lately. I don't want to bring any more to my door. An RIC man was shot here a few weeks ago. Murdered, you mean. There you are, Seamus. You have to go quick. What's wrong, Catherine? A lorry full of soldiers and RIC have raided our house. They arrived about an hour ago. They ordered my brothers outside. Wouldn't even let them put on their coats. They've been shivering in their vests for ages. They're turning the house upside down. Then the RIC man, the tan, you know, the English one. I think it's stiff. Yeah, he was acting funny. He asked me did I know anything about the Hughes murder. And then he asked me about you. Do you know something about that murder? I never murdered anyone in my life. He was asking everyone the same question, Mary. But he was acting really funny. Going on about losing the battle. And then they started on the presses and drawers, throwing everything about. The house is destroyed. Were they looking for guns? I don't know. I managed to slip away. How did they hear I was in Maynooth? You weren't exactly lying low. I didn't think I had to. There's talk in the village that we have an informer among our own. Seems like it might be true. Where are they now, Catherine? They're still there. I knew you'd probably be in the pub. You'd better go. Oh, she's right, Con. Not through the front door, Seamus. Joseph, can you bring us out the back way? All right, but quickly. And if he's caught, don't say you were here. I'm in enough trouble with the RIC as it is. Come on. You better come with us, Catherine. If you're spotted coming out, they suspect something. Go back the long way. I'm coming. Bye, Mary. Sissy. What did I do? I only wrote a play. It must have been some play. <laughs> Maybe Mr Yates is looking for him to help run the Abbey Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was it you wanted to tell me? Mary, you can't breathe a word. I... I'm not the better of that. Go on with you, Sissy. We've had enough distractions for today. I won't keep her long. You have ten minutes. Hurry up, Sissy. I think he means it. Are you sure we can't go upstairs? My mother is up there. Just tell me. Not again. 
Is he here? Your sort is not welcome. My sort? You know what I mean. The sort of person just trying to do their job. Is that what you mean? You can do your job somewhere else. Do you people really think I want to be here? That I like it? I don't care. I came in here with a simple question. I didn't threaten anyone. Now would you please answer the bleeding question? Is he here? Who is it you're looking for? My colour. Never heard of him. What does he look like? I don't know, but I have to find him. Why do you want him? I'm following orders. I'll, I'll be in trouble if I don't find him. Please help me. We're losing here, you know. Oh. Oh. Did, did you hear that? Can you hear him? Are you all right? Someone's calling me. You sure you haven't seen him? He's not here. What am I going to do? I promise you, he's not here. Mary, get the lad a glass of whiskey. Daddy. Oh, Mr. Barry. Get it, Mary. Here you go. Now, son, get that into you. It'll help you. Are you trying to bribe me? Have you got something to hide? I just want to help, that's all. Take a drink, it'll warm you up on a cold day like today. Aye, that's it. I should go. Will you be all right? I have to keep looking. Maybe you should go back to the barracks. The barracks? It, it sounds like you've had a busy day. I have. I have people. People calling me. I'm tired. I, I have to go down the street anyway. I'll walk with you. It's only a short distance. Come on. I can search again tomorrow. Yeah, of course you can. I won't be long, Mary. Steady now, son. Steady now. If he wasn't an RIC man, you could almost feel sorry for him. He has a mother and father just like the rest of us. What did you want to tell me? Another romance? Gone sour. Oh, Mary. I'm pregnant. What? Nearly four months. How? Oh, God, Mary, I didn't think you were that innocent. No, I mean, how did you let it... Are you sure? I mean, I haven't had my friends in months and I feel sick every morning, so... Yeah, I'm sure. Whose is it? It doesn't matter. It's one of the students from the college. I don't make a habit of this. I'm sorry. It's not the fellow with the broken nose. I wouldn't be seen dead with him. That smelly fella, Timmy, that works on O'Connor's farm. No. Well, what about... I'm not telling you. Isn't it enough that I'm pregnant? It's never the lad with the black nails, the gardener from the college. For God's sake, are you going to list every man in Maynooth? If you must know, and you're not going to repeat this to anyone, but it was Dunica. My cousin, Dunica. Auntie Anne's Dunica. Oh, God. Have you told him? You're the first to know. What will Auntie Anne say? I'm not telling her. You have to tell Dunica. You might want to do the gallant thing and marry me. I'm not sure I'd like that. What's the alternative? Go into a home? I might go stay with my aunt in Dublin for a while to have the baby. Adoption? Yeah. No. I can't think about it being taken away by strangers. Well, then tell Dunica. What if he doesn't believe me? You can't do it on your own. Shh. How did it go, Daddy? He's back in the barracks. The other lads brought him to his room. What did they say? Not much. But I got the feeling that this wasn't the first time. This place has been like a train station all day. Sissy, you'll excuse Mary. There's work to be done. I'm going, Mr. Barry. See you, Mary. Not a word, remember. Lips are sealed. What was that about? Ah, you know, Sissy. I do, more's the pity. A wild young one. Go on, get started with the cleaning. I'll bring up the crates. You were very good for looking after that RIC lad. Well, it's hard to see someone in that state and him only a young fella. Especially after what happened with the other RIC man. Daddy, uh, was it local lads that killed him, do you think? Sure, how would I know, Mary? Better off not thinking about it. How can I ever not think about it? How can I ever not think about it? Oh, Joseph. Frax 
Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 to 2023 initiative.